My name is Brian Ian, civil engineer by profession and from my experience I'm going to help you understand the most common mistakes in construction and specifically beams in this particular video. You will also know how to avoid these common mistakes in construction so be sure to watch this video till the end. Let's first clearly understand what beams mean. This is a beam. It's a structure member that transfers both dead load and live load from the slabs to the columns. Dead load means the load of the building itself, then live load means the loading imposed on the building by the people and other objects. Common mistake number one in beams is tying binding wire wrongly. Most steel fixers just make a single tie which is not sufficient to hold the beam main bars strongly and firmly. When casting concrete for the beams, these beam main bars get out of position because the way they were tied was not firm and strong. Therefore, this is a mistake. Better ways of tying binding wire to stirrups and beam main bars include a cross tie which holds the steel bars firmly and hence keeping the steel bars in position even when casting concrete. These beam main bars or stirrups are not shaken due to the vibration. Therefore, this is correct. Common mistake number two in beams is not providing a sufficient development length. Development length in beams is this extra length that transfers load or stress from the steel bar to the concrete. What most steel fixers do or mention is, is that they simply cut the beam main bars like a straight line, tie on stirrups and just cast concrete which is wrong because it will end up cracking. The correct version of what should be done is providing the development length for bottom bars and top bars then for middle bars you can just fix them here. Therefore this one on the left is wrong and this one on the right is correct. Common mistake number 3 is using less bar diameter in plinth beam. What I have seen on a number of projects is that for the plinth beams or the ground beam, most steel fixers or contractors simply fix 10mm bars at the bottom and maybe 12mm or 10mm at the top here, which is wrong. The correct version or what is supposed to be done is that the minimum bar size here at the bottom should be 12mm, maybe you can use 10mm here on top that's okay but at the bottom the minimum bar size should always be 12 millimeters then the minimum bar size at the top here will be 10 millimeters in summary use less bar diameter for the top bars than bottom bars maybe let's say we have 16 millimeters here as bottom bars we could have 12 millimeters as top bars or if we have 25 millimeters as bottom bars we can have 16 millimeters as top bars Common mistake number 4 is providing an insufficient concrete cover. So, if this is the section of a beam, this part here, this part here, and all this part here is what we call a concrete cover. Taking this beam as an example, the mistake that I see all the time is that after tying the steel for the beam, carpenters simply fix timber boards or steel plates as homework this side and later cast concrete here with no spacer blocks here or here. This means that steel bars on one side will remain exposed even after casting concrete which will lead to corrosion. The correct version is fixing spacer blocks here on the right and on the left so that this steel can properly be balanced in the middle here. Therefore after casting concrete this steel will be fully covered with concrete this side and this side hence no chances for corrosion. The minimum concrete cover in beams should not be less than 25 mm. Common mistake number 5 is the wrong size of the plinth beam. What most contractors do is that they simply make the depth and the width of the plinth beam the same which is wrong. The correct version is that for plinth beams or ground beams like this one, the depth should be higher than the width. Also remember that the minimum depth for plinth beams should be 12 inches also remember that the minimum diameter for steel bars used as stirrups in plinth beams should be 6 mm and also the first stirrup should not be placed at a distance not more than 50 mm from the main column. Therefore, the first stirrup here will always be around 50 mm from the main column. Common mistake number 6 is overlapping bottom bars near the column. Lapping is not allowed here and here. Lapping is allowed at a distance of L divided by 6. L is the cutting length of the beam main bars and 6 is a constant. Do not provide lapping for bottom bars at the center here, but for top bars it's absolutely fine to provide overlapping at exactly L divided by 2 in the middle here. 
Common mistake number seven is providing more steel bars as top bars than bottom bars. Say, if this is our beam, three steel bars on top and two steel bars as bottom bars, that is very wrong. This is the compression zone and this is the tension zone. Concrete is weak in tension, therefore we should provide or we should use maximum number of steel bars in the bottom position and minimum number of steel bars in the top position. Therefore, the mistake that I normally see in most contractors is that for example, making three steel bars as top bars and two steel bars as bottom bars or four steel bars as top bars and three steel bars as bottom bars and this is a big mistake. What is correct is fixing three steel bars as bottom bars and two steel bars as top bars or four steel bars as bottom bars and three steel bars as top bars. Common mistake number eight is failing to put ties at the beam and column joint. Let's say this is a column and this is a beam extending this extreme end. What most steel fixers do is that they fix ties up to this point and then cast concrete, leaving out this part with no ties. What is correct is fixing these ties up to this point here. Syrups for the beam will stop here, but column ties will go up to this extreme end. I hope I'm clear. Common mistake number 9 is wrong arrangement of steel bars at connecting points with columns. What most steel fixers do is that they simply fix steel in such way that you find it on one side and not on the other side. What is correct is fixing steel bars so that they can balance both sides. Common mistake number 10 that I see all the time is placing wood or plastics or any other materials act as concrete covers at the bottom here or on the sides. For example, under all these beams, these steel fixers used wood instead of spacer blocks, which is wrong. Use concrete spacer blocks to provide the required concrete cover. In summary, the most 10 common mistakes in construction for beams are tying binding wire wrongly, insufficient development length, using less bar diameter in plinth beams, insufficient concrete cover, the wrong size of the plinth beam, overlapping bottom bars near the columns, fixing more steel bars at the top than the bottom, failing to provide ties at the beam and column joints, placing wood, plastics or any other unapproved materials to act as concrete covers. Wrong arrangement of beam main bars at connecting points with columns. I also provided the correct version of what is supposed to be done. In case you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section. I will answer all your questions immediately. That's the end of this part 3 about the common mistakes in construction that is beams. Be sure to watch this video on the right about the common mistakes in slabs and how to avoid them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.